Hi again, it's Chrissy, your Life Skills and Deployment Educator from Fleet and Family Support Center in San Diego. I'm here today to pick up where we left off on the briefs about emotional cycles of deployment. We're picking up with stage four. I would also suggest this as a combined section to a mid-deployment support brief. What's nice about providing this course in an on-demand setting is that normally we can only offer mid-deployment support for uh, family members back at home. So this is a good opportunity to provide those additional briefs for sailors um, underway. So consider this as a part of your workup or some of the training that you could take with you aboard ship. So I'm here again, talking to myself in my workspace to an iPad, but I did get a new plant today. So um, that's cheering me up a little bit. I hope it cheers you up as well. Uh, maybe we can have some change in scenery. Um, all right, so jumping in. We ended here, emotional disorganization. Um, this is the stereotypical spouse crying at the pier, um, children having trouble adjusting, maybe having nightmares, maybe having um, difficulty uh, paying attention at school. Uh, the, the significant other back at home who feels like they might not make it through this ordeal or a service member who could be aboard ship and who is having trouble focusing or having trouble adjusting to the new, uh, the new environment, new work schedule, and um, just general shipboard uh, style, lifestyle. So let's recap on what that really looks like. The typical time for emotional disorganization is from the departure day until um, six weeks. Interesting thing about uh, the pandemic and COVID-19 is that we actually might have service members on ship in port, still home technically, um, but might be going through emotional disorganization because of having to either leave early or having to be in a quarantine situation or needing just having to be needed aboard ship for um, to get ready to leave. Um, realize that six weeks is average, so that means that it could be longer, it could be shorter. Um, our emotional cycles do not adhere to a time that research has decided upon. So if you feel like you're still unsettled, 8, 10, 12 weeks, um, that could be normal for you. But realize then there are also some additional resources you can reach out to to get a little bit more specific help um, for your situation. Um, for service members, reach out to your aboard um, your, sh your ship POCs, if you have a Deployed Resiliency Counselor or DRC, they're trained in helping you adjust. Um, you can also reach out to your medical department or um, find some other activities that, you that could support you, some health activities or goals, and then your chaplains should be able to help you as well. Um, you will be adjusting to new routines and new norms, and there might be some resistance to that, whether you're aboard ship or at home. I am actually resisting right now the uh, sensation of being at home frequently, not being with family members, not being with friends, not being able to go out. Um, so we're dealing with this at home as well as um, in our current environment, not just um, related to a deployment. And then we can become stuck in this stage. So there are people, um, if you feel like you have gone beyond the six weeks, you kind of are asking those questions, when will it um, when will I start to feel normal again? That might be a good time to reach out um, to get a little uh, a little bit more help from a subject matter expert. Those chaplains, DRCs, for those of us at home, uh, reach out to focus families overcoming under stress, or uh, some a counselor through Military One Source or Fleet and Family does have tele um, counseling services. All right, so what's good is after you have gone through emotional disorganization, stage five is recovery and stabilization. So that kind of looks like I've adjusted to what is coming towards me. I'm moving and grooving. I feel like I don't want to live here forever, but it's working for me right now. I'm able to keep the house in order. Um, I'm accomplishing tasks. I'm productive at work. Um, I have a social support structure that works for me. Uh, aboard ship, this might look like I'm getting to do the job that I train to do, which is fun and exciting. I also, um, I have a group of friends that I can confide in. I've found ways to, uh, to de-stress. I've found ways to enjoy my free time um, or the little bit of off time I have. 
Um, and this one says here four to six weeks. This is all going to be dependent on your deployment cycle, so I wouldn't even really necessarily put a time period on this. Now, I know some spouses um, or family members who have experienced frequent and multiple deployments, and so they might go to recovery and stabilization pretty quickly. It could be drop sailor off, um, have a cry in the car, and then get on with it. And um, if that's you, great. If it's not, that's okay too. It doesn't that there is no right way to go about this. Also, don't be surprised if you recover and stable and stabilize really quickly that you might actually um, flip back from time to time. There could be an event in your life like a death in the family and you might feel that emotional disorganization. Um, I actually, during COVID-19, I felt like I was doing really well. I was like, okay, I lived in one of those armpits of, a, of not a, armpits of the Navy. You know, you get those like good duty stations, the ones you're excited to go to, and then you have the ones that you're like, the Navy has to like make people go. They kick them out the door to go. I lived in one of those places for a period of time. My kids were young. Um, I didn't necessarily feel like I had a good support structure um, there. And so I felt like when we went to stay at home orders during COVID-19, I was like, oh, that's okay. I, I've done this before. Um, I can handle it. And actually one really small wrong move and um, of my screen cracking on my phone, um, I realized that I was a lot more fragile um, than I was. And it was mostly because uh, phone kind of need it right now. This is my connection to the world and connection to uh, all of my, all of the things that I need outside of the home. And two, where do you get your phone fixed during a global pandemic? Nowhere. <laughs> I had to ship that baby off to the phone company and that was expensive. But just realize that if something happens to you that's stressful, traumatic, or something you maybe weren't expecting, you might flip back into emotional disorganization, and that's okay. Just realize that's where that's where you are, accept it, reach out for those resources, okay? So during this stage, you might feel like your new routines are pretty well established. You'll have increased confidence in your ability to handle things at home. Um, you could say like, man, that uh, broken smoke detector, that really threw me for a loop. I've never done that before. Uh, went and checked out some videos, called a friend, um, had somebody walk me through it, and I did it, and I feel really empowered now. Uh, for the service member, this might look like, well, I always heard someone talk about this issue with systems or navigation or the ship, and now I got to actually go and experience that, and so I'm feeling really empowered and um, good at what I do. Um, so that's good. And then you have new um, sources of support. So for some of us, that might look like more virtual services, um, calling people on the phone, maybe getting to know our neighbors a little bit better. Um, and then for service members, that might be um, maybe needing to find some social contact that's outside of your department or your workstation, um, reaching out, maybe getting involved in some kind of a support group aboard ship. Um, religious services, um, some kind of group exercise, something like that that can be really helpful for you. Um, all right, so recovery and stabilization, it's a nice place to be. Um, next you have the anticipation of the return. Um, and again, this is not um, eight, this is not typical. People sometimes will have anticipation of return when they get to halfway mark of deployment or uh, three quarters, and some people might not, not actually have anticipation of return about two, until about two weeks before. So we'll talk about that in the next video, and then if you're interested in more mid-deployment support, I'm gonna expound upon some mid-deployment support activities and ideas and training. Thanks for watching. We're looking forward to seeing all of you very soon, and um, stay safe, bye.